Hi everyone and welcome to another Magic's Beginners tutorial. Let me just say from the outset that I'm not a musician. I can't read music, I can't write music and I can't play a musical instrument of any sort. Some of you may have seen me playing a, an external MIDI keyboard on some of my previous videos but generally I play rather badly and invariably one finger at a time. I just bimble along as best I can. Right, let's start this one. As always, we're going to create a new project. Click on OK. This track one will put a default MIDI record into this track. And that represents this keyboard. If we were to click on the record key or the record button here, it would record this keyboard, which we can play notes on, like so. But it doesn't really matter what it says in here. If you right click on the number of that track, hover over the number one, right click, there's an option here to clean that track. Click on that and it'll give you a completely new empty track. Right, what I'm trying to do here is to hopefully demonstrate how to mix uh, an instrument with some of the loops in your sound pools. So let's click on the instruments tab. There we go. I've got quite a few instruments in my repertoire simply because I've purchased more of them from the Magic Store. On the Store tab on the right hand side here, if you click on that, it'll bring up the, the store and what's available in the store. And on this star button here, this cogwheel, if you click on that, you can see which ones you've purchased. You can also select more sound pools, more instruments or more effects. And basically, I've clicked on more instruments and it will show the instruments that are available and you can purchase them through the Magic Store. Anyway, let's go back to the Instruments tab. With all of the instruments, if you hover over the centre of the instrument, you'll get a play button in the centre, like so. And on the top left hand side of each one of them, you have an arrow button that inserts that instrument into the project. And the instrument I'm going to use is the Century Keys. This one isn't a standard sound pool, sorry, this isn't a standard instrument with Magics. It's another one I've purchased, but you can apply this to any other instruments. So let's click on this arrow and insert that instrument into the project. Whenever you insert an instrument, it will always give you a default track on the first available track it can record on. And it will bring up the engine here that is used to produce that sound. If we click into the play area, tap the space button and play that sound. Okay, we'll stop that. This at the moment is playing the default keys. What I want to do is drop down this menu and I'm going to select Keys Cathedral because that gives you a slightly more enriched sound. Gives you a nice pretty picture here. Let's just tap the space bar, see what that sounds like. Okay, we'll stop that. With all of the instruments, you usually get quite a few controls that you can play around with to change the sound of the instruments. On this uh, cathedral keys, we have a, a room amount here. And what I'll do, I'll, play, I'll press the space bar to play this and I'll ju just adjust some of these settings for you so you can see what they sound like. Let's play it. This one will set it to a much larger room or a smaller room. The room damping actually re reduces the amount of echo in the room. Like so. Let's just stop it and play it again. Here we have a, a timbre control, which is basically the lid of the piano, which we can move to close it. And as you can tell, that dulls down the sounds. And we can open it. And on the bottom here, we've got a colour, which emphasises either the high frequency notes when set to the cold setting or the low frequency notes when set to the warm and that's the one I want to use. Let's just stop that. If you notice when it plays this object and this is an object just like anything else that you put into a, a track it actually um, imitates the keys that are being pressed on the keyboard here 
just play it briefly to show you. There you go, we can see the keys being played. Stop that. Now let's go to the loops tab. And what I want to use here is um, a sound pool called Best of Easy Listening. Again, this is another sound pool that I've purchased from the Magic Store, but you can use any of your other sound pools that are available to you if you haven't purchased any more. I'm going to click on the bass, and the bass I'm going to use is Deep, this one here. Click on that button, it'll play you a sample of it. Stop that. Now at the moment, I have no idea what key or which notes this object is playing in, in track one. But what I need to do is to find out what notes these are on the pitch settings here, where we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Number seven is not available because that's obviously going to be a higher pitch than this bass guitar can play. But what I do is just drag a number one onto the screen anywhere, it doesn't matter where, and let it put an object into the project and at the top of the screen it'll show you the note of pitch one and that is C so I'll put a two in there that's D so I can assume this is going to be C D E F G and A let's just put a six in there and there we are that's an A we'll highlight those and delete them that was just an experiment to find out what notes these play and they now relate to C D, E, F, G and A and they also relate to the notes on the keyboard here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 because I have no musical skills what I tend to do is when I play this object I just look at the keyboard of the instrument here to see which note plays first or which lowest note plays first and I use that then as a means of putting down something that might actually match with it from this bass section. Let's just play it. Stop that. Now that played on an A by the looks of it. C, D, E, F, G, A. So what I'm going to do is use this C, D, E, F, G and A and I'll put a number six, eight bars in front. Let's just play that a moment. No, that's in the wrong place. So drag that across until it sounds something reasonable. At the moment, because the screen is zoomed in, we don't get to see all of the beats and all of the bars, but let's play it again. Sounds pretty reasonable. Let's just play from there. Now this top object changes pitch here after those second four beats. So I'm going to trim this bass object back four beats. Um, I'm trying to work out what note this is playing. So I'm going to play it again from there and look at the keyboard to see what other note is playing. Let's just play it. And that was a little bit difficult to see. Unfortunately, the screen capture software I'm using to record this video is slowing the video down slightly, so sometimes it's a little bit difficult to see the keys. But I believe it played a C here or here. So what I'm going to do is put a number one in there. And I know that it's going to change pitch again here, so I'm going to trim that one back. And let's just play that to see if that was the right note. Yes, that seemed okay. And again, we need to look at the keyboard to find out which next note is for this part of the B object here. Play it again. Now that looked to be playing an E, this E here. So let's just try putting an 
E in there, C, D, E, put a three in there, like so. And again, it's going to change pitch there, so we'll trim that one off. Play that. Mm. Not quite certain about that one. Let's uh, delete that and have another look. Oh. Now, I'm not 100% sure, but that could have been a D. Let's put a, a number two in there. See if that sounds any better. Again, trim those last four beats off. Play it. Oh, that sounds better. Whether it's right or wrong, it sounds okay, so we'll we'll stick with it. Um, let's put a, a number three in here. Next one, and trim that one back. See what that sounds like. It's really a case of just keep putting things in and changing the pitch until they sound about right. That seems okay. Let's play from here and see what this next note needs to be because that's a slightly different note altogether, I think. Let's try that. Hmm. I wasn't certain about that one, but I think I saw an F in there somewhere. Let's try an F. Let's try a. Um, a let's try a four. Where are we? C, D, E, F. Let's try four in there. Trim that one back. Play that. Well, that sounds alright. I think I'm having a, a bit of luck here finding the right notes. <laughs> um, we'll play from this point, see what the next note's going to be. I think that was another A, given the fact that, uh, which is six, C, D, E, F, G, A. I think we started off with a six, so hold the control key down on that first object, click and drag, and copy that one across to here. And let's just see what that sounds like. Play it again. That sounds okay. And I think this one's going to be another one. So let's put a one in there. As I said before, it's just a case of dropping objects onto the tracks and messing around with them until they sound okay or something reasonable. That's all I do. And that last one here. Um, that was a, a strange one. Let's put a five in there. And we'll cut that one back as well. Play that. Now oh, that'll do. Doesn't sound too bad. If we move this out of the way, so that I can actually get to these uh, zoom controls here. We can zoom in and zoom out. Now, if you look at the top of the screen, at the top object, if you look at the very first four beats here, and what is going to be the next four beats, they're an identical piece. And the same for the next piece, and the next, and the next. So, what's going to do now, this is going to be a repetition from here, from the start. So we don't have any beats or bass to play from the start here. It doesn't start, let's just zoom out a little bit. We don't start until um, this point here. Let's just extend the amount of play time. We'll take that right out. And we'll also extend that object. And you can take these objects as far as you like. So if you click away and you can see 
the similarity between those two pieces there on 13-1 and 15-1 to this one here. So what we'll do, we'll click and highlight those objects for that base that we've just put in, hold the control key down, click and drag, and take those to the next eight beats there at 17 one. And if you look here, here's that um, pattern on that first one we put the bases on, and here's the same pattern again. But what we've got now is a gap in between that we've never set any base with. So I'm going to assume that it's very similar to these first four pieces of music here, which was actually a six, a one, a two, and a three. And I think that can probably be copied. So let's just copy those four. All right, so hover over the first one, hold the control key down, click and drag, and copy that into that space there. And what we'll do, we'll, we'll play this from the start to see if this matches everything. Click away from it, you'll just unhighlight it, tap the spacebar. Yes, that sounded pretty good. Right, let's just stop that. Ignore all the clicking and the glitches that you can hear as it's playing this. That is actually uh, Magic's trying to not only generate the video on the screen and uh, put the play cursor going across the screen, it causes these glitches. But once you actually export this file as an MP3, it won't happen. That won't appear in your MP3 or even if you rendered the video. Because this bass is a little quiet, let's just turn it up. On the right hand side of the, the track control here, there's an effects button. Click on the effects. As always, ignore all of these down here. Click on the very top one, the audio effects rack for that track. And it'll bring up the, um, the effects rack. If it brings it up and you're not in the, the right uh, screen, click on the parametric equalizer button here. And on the right hand side, is the master volume for that track. Click on the button and let's add um, three decibels to it and close it. That will add that volume to this track and once you've added a, an effect to a track you get this highlight here on that track. So let's just see if that's a little bit louder for us. Play it. sounds okay but as you can tell you can hear those glitches but don't worry about them let's stop that now let's put a, a little bit of a drum beat in there let's go to the drums and what shall we use uh, I don't know let's select um, jazzy I think I've tried this one before uh, Chazzy D. That'll probably do. Let's see what that sounds like. As always, the drums don't have a pitch because drums can't change their pitch, but let's just drag one of those into here somewhere and see what we uh, make of it. Let's play it from this point. And I have no idea where I've just put this drum. I've just dropped it in there just to find out if it's in the right place. If not, I'll move it. Let's play it. sound too bad let's just extend that it's when you actually extend them it's better if you actually extend them by an equal number of bars here which I've got one two three four and I'm going to play this from the start to find out where this drum is coming in we can actually get rid of this um, instrument now because we're finished with it let's close that down and let's play this
doesn't sound too bad. Um, let's pick a, another drum. Let's try something like a 60s beat. Ooh, crack it, maybe not. Hmm. Just mess around with the drums and pick one out. Let's just drop it in, see what happens. What I'm going to do is drop this one halfway across that uh, Jazzy D one, extend this all the way out, keep it going. And let's play it from this point here where those drums come in just before it. Let's play that. Yeah, that doesn't seem to work, does it? Okay, we'll, we'll not bother with that one. Let's try something else. And you just keep dropping them in, see what they sound like, drop them in any way you like and play around with them. Let's try that. Let's move this one out of the way so we can just hear this one on its own. Hmm, this isn't working at all. Let's put that back. What else can I use? Maybe I ought to stick to another jazzy one. Let's try jazzy A. Oop, that's a bit similarly. Hmm, that's not working. I wonder if that one will work. Old oh, swing A. Try putting one of those in there. Let's play from here. That's better. That'll do. So I'm going to cut these back to eight bars and I'm going to put this one on the end and extend that one out there. Let's just play that. doesn't sound too bad that'll do for now if we zoom out a little bit here click on that minus button I'm probably going to end this here because I'm only going to bore you if I carry on so I'm going to pull this um, instrument back no in fact what I'll do I'll leave that where it is zoom back in that is the end of that instrument um, where does it repeat uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that the repeat there? I'm not certain, but I might copy these. That, that doesn't look right because I've got the same note on the end as the start. But then again, I have there, so let's just hold the control key down, drag those across. Oops, not so. And let's play that. In fact, I'm virtually finished here for a tutorial. I was only going to demonstrate how to incorporate an instrument into a track and add some of your loops from your samples. And that gives you a basic idea of how to do it. So let's just play this from the start, from here. This, I'll actually fade this without actually fading the instruments. I'll fade this physically when I record it. So at the end of this play, it will fade away. Anyway, I hope that's helped you a little bit to understand how to mix your instruments and your sound loops. Thanks for watching.